if you're looking for something to watch while you have some downtime, we've got a Peacock recommendation for you. It's called If You Were the Last, and it follows two astronauts lost in space on a broken down ship. Mm, a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. As their time wears down, they're posed with a question whether to spend their remaining days as friends or something more. Kwani spoke with director Christian Mercado. So what you're saying is you take a trillion and divide it by 1,200 and you can save 833 million people's lives on Earth? You just do that math right now? I'm wicked smart. So the movie on Peacock called If You Were the Last is a rom-com that is, correct me if you've heard this before, out of this world. <laughs> Yeah, it is out of this world. The premise of it is Adam and Jane have been drifting through space for over three years and are essentially trying to figure out if they're going to ever make it back on Earth. You really don't think they're sending anybody to save us? I mean... What drew you to actually wanting to direct this film? I felt like it's rare to see a movie that's so um, beautifully optimistic and but also nuanced and complex about love, you know? If you get the opportunity to bring back Matt Damon. No, screw Matt Damon. That's just harsh. I was really aching to see one that felt new and fresh. I think people see that on camera as well. Obviously the actors really help sell the story. The movie's about an hour 30. So how were you able to manage really telling a real story, but also within the constraints of time? I think a good story or a good film can kind of tell you a lot just by like moving you along in different ways, little by little, peter out the answers, you know? What would you say was one of the more challenging things that you had to deal with with directing this? Oh, one of the most challenging parts of directing it? I think mean, maybe building the aesthetics of it was really challenging. Because, you know, it's a, it's an indie film and there's always limitations on indies. I think I did a really good job in, like, kind of giving it a unique aesthetic and a unique place and created its own world, you know? And I was really, that was hard. There was recently a study by USC that basically said from the top films in 07 to 2022, they found that the Hispanic and Latino representation, not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera had an improved in those 16 years. What do you think needs to change in order for us to make sure that we are seeing everyone in front and behind the camera? Truth be told, it's just a complicated situation where like, you don't have enough um, Latino executives, you know? So it's hard to like have people who can see you in a clear way, I think. And then the other thing is like, there is like this overabundance of like, white showrunners. There's not a lot of Latino, Latine showrunners. And I mean, that's a real truthful observation that we need to talk about. Yeah. And I think people are scared to talk about it because then it's like, oh, I'll never get hired in my dream show or something like that. But to break this cycle that we're kind of stuck in, if we don't speak about it, we're just going to be in perpetuating it constantly. So checkmate. Dang. Boom. That's my hot take, you know? <laughs> I, think I, can't wait for that. I can't wait for the hate mail. <laughs> oh, stop. I do not. Agree. But I appreciate, one, your perspective. I appreciate the work that you're doing. And congratulations on this film. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I think so. I hope yes. you watch it. Please go watch it. It's, go watch it's it. Letter to cinema, to pop culture, to nostalgia, to love. It's on Peacock. It's so easy to see. <laughs> <laughs>